I'm Edward and I'm a nervous system specialist uh, living in Whistler and working in a clinical practice and I'm here with Robin and we're going to talk about conscious breath and I'm just curious as to, well you're passionate firstly about it and I wanted to ask a little bit about why, where does that passion come from within you and, and what motivates you to share the work? Uh, thank you Edward, it's, uh, it's great to have you here for the training and Really, the passion comes from the benefits, you know, the, what it's done for me okay. and how that's become a burning desire of how I wanted to share that with others and my purpose and message that I feel it's coming through stronger than anything right now is really simplifying the technique and reminding people that it can be really gentle mm -hmm. and soft and simple and I feel like in the West there there has been a a reputation of breath work that gives the people people an idea that it needs to be dramatic and cathartic and and intense. And so what we're finding more and more in circles is that people are are finding a very simple way to be at peace by simply creating a relaxation res response in their system. They're remembering how to slow down and relax and, and we're learning more and more about the science of the breath, how it works in the nervous system, how our lives are very sped up in general and as soon as we deepen and relax our breathing it slows everything down which takes us out of the sympathetic nervous system back into the parasympathetic which is the healing state and it frees up a lot of energy for us to take care of ourselves again. Amazing. Yeah. That sounds great. So let's talk a little bit about some of the physical things that are going to manifest during the training that I'm here for. Well, you've experienced it a little bit, and uh, I really appreciate your connection with, with trauma work in general and how you had this personal experience of, wow, this is getting me in touch with something that's been stored in my body. Yeah. But physically, we're not only getting oxygen from our breathing, we're actually moving the prana and the life force. Mm -hmm. So what we realize now is that things that we've experienced that are heavy in our lives are stored at a denser, slower frequency, which becomes a blocked energy pattern mm -hmm. in the body. Right. And we're realizing that we can go in in a gentle way okay. and allow for the breath to be organic itself. Yeah. And so we don't have to force it. In fact, as facilitators, you're going to learn this week that... When you see that someone's working too hard, you can remind them to be more gentle with themselves. Containment. Right. And yeah. continue to bring presence and allow themselves to feel what wants to be felt, which doesn't have to be big. Right. Right. And, you, you, and that's really your focus right now is what I'm understanding. It's about approaching it with some gentleness and curiosity as opposed to sort of more effort and force. Right. And it's, it's so much about attitude, right? Okay. And so I'm see, we're seeing, and you'll see this week, that it's, it's fascinating to see how the breath is a very deep reflection of where people are at. So if someone likes to work too hard, it's going to show up by them working really hard in their rhythm. And if they need a little bit more energy in life, and they're kind of feeling like they're in a funk and they're lethargic, there's also not much happening in the breath. So then we come in as a guide when we encourage them to just breathe a little deeper. Mm-hmm but continually allow the breath to stay relaxed. Mm -hmm. And then you'll find that there's holding patterns in some people that like to be in control. And we help people bring awareness to the areas in the body where that control is happening because there's a lack of freedom, there's a lack of integration, and therefore a lack of surrender, trust, and relaxation. You just highlighted there beautifully the difference in a lot of the people that might be coming to this training and so in doing that you're highlighting that this training is beneficial for everybody depending on their pattern and what's going on within them yeah very much so i've found that anyone can improve their breathing no matter where they're at i've shared a training in the last few years where there was a, a couple that were in their 80s a, a brother of mine who is now doing um, warrior path work uh, an empowerment work with people who's in a wheelchair and a bunch of fit yogis and we were together for a weekend in the same room you know wow. and there was yeah. also a woman that was there that was uh, close to 300 pounds right and so really no matter where we're at we can 
simplify in a way that just brings presence, create the time and space. Right. 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 And start to receive ourselves by receiving our breath. Beautiful. And as we receive ourselves, we remember that we can't just inhale. Right. Because we're going to explode. We also need to relax and let go. And so there's a union of opposites that creates harmony in the body. But we're learning more and more the true chemistry mm. of how we breathe. Mm -hmm. So in my experience in the last many years, I've also seen other breath modalities that are encouraging people to breathe. And there's this beautiful ceremonial container and, and intention. But I feel like there has been a lack of truly helping people correct how they're breathing. Mm -hmm. Because the unlimited breath patterns that we have are given to us through the nature of our life experience. And if we're not learning how to correct them, we're not going to eliminate or correct certain patterns of how we're living and the symptoms we're creating in our body. Right. Beautiful. That makes a lot of sense. Um, you just mentioned the word chemistry, and I just wanted to explore a little bit about perhaps the connection between the breath and the mind. Uh-huh and perhaps some things that you've witnessed here in the last five days and some things that I might expect in the next five myself. <laughs> yeah, well, not just in the last five days, but it definitely showed up in these last five days. Yeah. <laughs> is that every emotion has a certain chemical response or reaction into the body. We right. know now scientifically that our emotions are chemical and there is an instantaneous reaction in the body Right. whether we're feeling safe or whether we're feeling afraid. Mm -hmm. And so the more we feel the sensations of joy and love, which it's also part of the experience to feel what's been covering up that love. Right. Right. We understand that we can keep things in check. We can keep things in balance by allowing ourselves to feel where we're at. So moving towards that again in a safe container and right. experiencing the full range of emotion. Right. But the fundamental chemistry of the breathing that, that people must understand is that it's impossible to hyperventilate if you're relaxing your exhale when you're circular breathing. Okay. Most of the breathing techniques that are taught based on the yoga practices of ancient India are pranayamic based. So their focus is meditation or focusing the mind. And so there's some aspect of control in okay. containing the quality of the exhale. Right. And what we found is that there's much more freedom in allowing ourselves to actually just relax on our backs. Yeah. Because when we're sitting up, we can, we're can we breathing very differently. Right. But when we're in a relaxed posture, we don't have to use any other muscles than the ingenious system of the respiratory system, which is mostly the diaphragm. So when we breathe diaphragmatically, we're breathing into the belly. Mm. And that's improving all of our chemistry and all of our hormonal balance throughout our whole system, particularly the di digestion in the belly. But if we start to control, contract, or force the exhale, we're also potentially creating some imbalance in our chemistry. Right. There's a lot that pops up there for me, <clears throat> just thinking about the modality that I work within. Uh, grounding through the back body and supporting the kidney and adrenal to help calm sympathetic nervous system. Right. And then the next one that's really interesting is how you're sort of mentioning about removing the prefrontal cortex, removing, removing effort, actually removing the concept of work right. and just really moving into a state of ease and flow. Uh -huh. and, and so when we're really assessing that, perhaps it's just we're really listening to our bodies. Right. We're honoring our bodies as opposed to using the mind to control the body. Right. Does it so we can all relate to the fact that there's a lot going on in the world right now. <laughs> and we're all, feeling, we're all feeling it. We're feeling pressured. And a lot of us are working hard to get more. And that's kind of the baby boomer generation. Right. And we've been taxed. So our adrenals are taxed. The body's taxed. We don't have any more energy. And we just want to kick back. Now yeah. And love each other. Right. 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 And so what we're realizing is that we don't have to work too hard, that the nature of life is abundant. And as we tap into it, there's this what the Taoists called the way Wu way, which is doing less but achieving more. Mm. And so there's this fluid water like way 
that we can bring presence to ourselves that will reflect in all of our relationships, in the workplace, in our home place, and everything that's triggering us, we can center ourselves with and get the teaching from it instead of reacting. Beautiful. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank, Thank you for you. your time. Thanks Thank for joining us. Thank you so us. much. Yeah, amazing.